It was narrated in an authentic narration. The Aisha radiallahu anha said, a woman, a companion woman, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining against her husband. Her name is Khawla bint Tha'laba. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I waste my youth for the sake of my husband, and I split my belly for him, obviously, from kids. I have had many kids for him. But when I grew older, and I'm not able to bring kids anymore, he said to me, you are like my mom. And at the time of ignorance, at the time of jahiliyyah, that considered as divorce. And she was complaining to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, this is my husband and this is me. I did everything that I was able to do. I sacrificed a lot. I did everything that any righteous wife could do. But look at him. He just divorced me in this way with no respect, with no love, with no appreciation, with no feelings, with no emotions. And she kept complaining, she kept arguing with the Prophet Wasallam. She doesn't want to be divorced until Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala revealed an ayah and the Prophet Wasallam to bring solution for her situation. And not only her situation, for everybody, all the Muslims, until the Day of Judgment. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala listed you know, the ways to get rid of al-dhihar, which is when someone says to his wife, you are like my mom or you are like my sister, which is I cannot touch you anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listed many things that you could do to get rid of that and to keep your wife as your wife. Bottom line, we look at this lady, how she was insist to keep her husband. She doesn't want to get divorced. And she did her best advocating herself to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him, speaking out in front of Aisha radiallahu anha, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond to her. And this is my topic for today, about do not forget to be graceful to one another. You know, this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not forget to be graceful to one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. At the end of the verse is talking about the divorce, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to those who are planning to divorce each other. Do not forget the good times together. You spend years, nowadays months, unfortunately. Wallahi, heart broken. They come after, you know, two or three months, Sheikh, we decide just to divorce each other. We don't feel, you know, that good relationship together. Allahu Akbar, two months, you spend hundreds of thousands on your wedding, at least, at least be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, for this money that you spend. Just one more, you are divorced, you are in way, I'm in another way. Allahu Akbar. Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to those who are planning to divorce, do not forget the good moments together. Under one roof, look at your kids, the fruit of that marriage. And remember the good times that you spent together. At least let these memories to bring good relationship even after divorce. Keep respect to each other, not cursing each other, not taking revenge against each other. I'm going to take you to the court. I will curse you in front of people. I will expose you. The man would say something and the woman will say something else. And keep fighting in front of people and come to the masjid, come to the sheikh, and keep fighting even in front of the sheikh, and no one listens to the sheikh anymore, unfortunately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, do not forget to be graceful to one another because of what you have spent together from this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to who at the first place? To those who plan to divorce. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in this way, to those who planning to divorce 100%, those who are still married, they have to be more cautious. They have to be more aware about being graceful to each other. How many times that you thank your wife and say thank you for good cooking, for good raising our kids. How many times you, the wife, thanking your husband after he comes back home or just all the time. You do nothing. I'm not sure what you are doing in your life. What do you do in job? Just to stay home one day and see your kids. How are they driving me crazy? And keep, you know, 
complaining against each other. This is not how the marriage the Prophet ﷺ practiced in his life. Marriage is a blessing. And having kids is another blessing. And you need to be graceful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the first place, then to those people next to you, specifically your wife or your husband, then your kids, then your parents. This is how we believe in Islam. So bottom line, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started in talking about those who are planning to divorce, do not forget to be graceful. And this is basically would be with more assurance, with more emphasizing with those who are married. Be graceful to your wife and you be graceful to your husband and say good words to each other. Smile in the faces of each other. Bring a gift once a while. Even, you know, a rose or whatever. It doesn't have to be a car. It doesn't have to be iPhone or whatever. Something, wallahi, sometimes a piece of chocolate will make a difference. Sometimes. Because it delivers that I do care. I do care. I pay attention of what you are doing. Sometimes one word, wallahi. One word would worth the whole life. You say it at the best time. So make sure that you are not in that position of forgetting or denying what your partner already sacrificed for you. And to be honest, whenever I would be asked about love in marriage, I would tell them, love is sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. If you want it to be really true, you know, lover, make sure that you sacrifice your time, your money, your emotions, your decisions, your peace of mind sometimes, for the sake of those who you love. The same ayah, do not forget to be graceful to one another, could be extended to another kind of relationships, friendship, for an example. When you have a friend and spend with them many years with good terms, enjoying life, hanging out with them, you know, spending sometimes more than what you spend with your family, then out of nothing, suddenly you would go in your way and he would go in his way, or you would go in your way, she would go in her way. Then you start accusing each other, cursing each other, talking about the secrets of each other. Stop. Stop. Fulfill the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Be graceful. Just zib it. You don't have to talk about anything. Just remember the good moments that you spend with them. You don't have to tell about their secrets, about their sometimes shortcomings, misdeeds. Yes, you have to try to cover shortcomings of others so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cover yours. But if you would expose anyone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose you. Trust me. The moment that you expose others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose you at the same way. Sometimes maybe could be more harmful. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill this ayah in your life. And not just in your life. Guess what? When you take a friend in this life, you know, with being genuine, with being grateful, with being truthful, in their love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they benefit you in this life, you enjoy with them. And they benefit you at the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shu'ara about the disbelievers and the Day of Judgment, they will say, we have no intercessor and we have no genuine friend. No intercessor and no genuine friend. Why they would mention genuine friend right here? Because they recognize the genuine friend will intercede for each other. Your friend will come on the Day of Judgment, especially if they are righteous. That's why you need to pick the righteous friends that they could be basically extending their friendship with you until the Day of Judgment, even after the Day of Judgment. Anyway, so that person, that friend will come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I don't see such and such in heaven. We used to go together to the masjid. We used to listen to the classes of Quran, the classes of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam together. Always he used to guide us to you, Oh Allah, where is so and so? And he might be actually struggling in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of that friend, will bring that friend from the hellfire and put it in heaven just for the sake of your friend. That's why I fulfill this ayah from this moment, because you need it now and you need it in the hereafter. The third example, the partnership, business. When you have a business with someone and you are making money, 
you are actually very loved to each other and you are so grateful to each other and you enjoy the time, the moment that the last comes, now everyone in his way and everyone start accusing the other party, sometimes cursing, sometimes, you know, this person such and such, he eats the haram money. Sometimes could be, could be sometimes, unfortunately. But sometimes could be nothing but this is business. This is how it is. How could we just get into a business and we believe 100% that will make money? The Prophet ﷺ taught us that. Without risk, there is no benefits. Without risk, there is no benefits. You have to have kind of risk. You know, and according to your risk, you will get benefits from that business. So you need to make sure that I'm fine. As long as we make money, alhamdulillah. As long as we lose money, alhamdulillah. And we are here to discuss where we had shortcomings. Let us fix our mistakes. But 100%, it is not the way that you fix your mistakes by accusing your partner and cursing them in front of people and expose them in front of people. He's such and such. It doesn't work like this. Be graceful to the good moments that you spent together, to the good amount of money that you made together. And you enjoyed that money. Be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful to your partner and say thank you. You know what? We are losing money. I wanted to be out of this. Peacefully, without harming anyone, without even harming yourself. Yes, you lost your money and he lost his money too. We have to be fair all the time. This ayah should be a principle for every single Muslim and could be practiced with every single aspect in your life. Do not forget to be graceful to one another.